Blessed the kingdom of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For peace from high, for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For peace and all of our stability of the Holy Church of God and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this Holy Church and for all who enter with faith, reverence, and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For our Holy Father, Francis Popo Rome, let us pray to the Lord. For our most reverent Metropolitan William for a God loving Bishop Milan. For the Venerable Presbyter, the Diacon in Christ, all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. For our government and for all in the service of our country, let us pray to the Lord. For this city, for every city, community, and for the faithful living in them, Oh, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather, for abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For those who travel by sea, air, and land, for the sick, the suffering, the captive, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we be delivered from all affliction, rest, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Protect us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God. By your grace, commemorate your most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious lady, that Theotokos and the Virgin Mary with all the saints last come themselves and one another, and our whole life to Christ our God. O Lord our God, mighty beyond description, glorious of understanding, merciful without limit, loving us all beyond expression, look with compassion on us and his holy church master and show us in those who pray with us riches your tender mercy. For to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, your glory, honor, worship, now and ever and forever.
For you are holy, our God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Let us be attentive, peace be to all of wisdom, be attentive.
Exalt your just in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Wisdom. A reading from the Epistle of St. Paul to the Romans. Let us be attentive. Brethren, there will be glory, honor, and peace for everyone who has done good. Likewise the Jew first, then the Greek. With God there is no favoritism. Sinners who do not have the law will perish without reference to it. Sinners bound by the law will be judged in accordance with it. For it is not those who hear the law who are just in the sight of God. It is those who keep it who will be declared just. When Gentiles who do not have the law keep it as by instinct, These men, although without the law, serve as a law for themselves. They show that the demands of the law are written in their hearts. Their conscience bears witness together with that law, and their thoughts will accuse or defend them on the day when in accordance with the gospel I preach, God will pass judgment on the secrets of men through Christ Jesus. Peace be to you, reader. Wisdom be attentive. given great victories to his king and shown his love for his anointed for David and his sons forever. Wisdom, let us stand and listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Let us be attentive. At that that time, as Jesus was walking on the Sea of Galilee, he watched two brothers, Simon, now known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately abandoned their nets and became his followers. He walked along further and caught sight of two other brothers, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. They too were in their boat, getting their nets in order with their father Zebedee. He called them and immediately abandoned their boat 
and Father to follow him. Jesus taught all the godly. He taught in their synagogues proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and cured the people of every disease and illness. Glory to Jesus Christ and happy Father's Day. I think that it's great that on this day when we somehow acknowledge the role of fathers that church offers us this gospel about calling of first apostles. This is something that is good fit and Always I wished somehow to have this gospel reading on Father's Day. Sometimes even I had, tem to, I had temptation to somehow not to be obedient to liturgical like the schedules and to switch gospels, but then I always put this temptation aside. Because this calling which we, about which we heard in Gospel, it has a lot of to, to do with Father's Day. Christ was not only calling this man to be apostles, to be his followers, but he already knew what kind of role they will play in the life in the church. Those men heard his calling and they left everything. It might seem to us easy, but it was not easy. Especially when we realize that they were not just simple fishermen. They had this family company, we would call it today. So it was like social status was high. They abandoned their family company just to follow this stranger who called them. For sure, it was a result of God's grace which worked in their souls. But at the moment, there was no really good explanation, logical explanation, to, to prove that it is the correct step they made. Probably others, their friends and family members, at the moment they saw them, that they are crazy, that they are not wise, that they lost their mind. But true is that they followed that inner voice which called them to follow Christ. And in him they found real life. It was not easy. They followed him in poverty, in difficulties, in persecutions. They followed him even he rebuked them many times because they were not able to understand what he is telling them. But in the end, after Christ's resurrection, after Pentecost, they understood their role. Christ called them to become these leaders of church which was born. Those who will preach, who will spread this word of salvation among nations. Yes, they had to go through this preparation they had to spend this time in formation with Christ and then 
to be prepared for this gift of the Holy Spirit and then to start to do the vocation God gave them. And if we go through centuries, we can see like these holy church fathers who were spiritual children of these apostles. They became heads of local churches, these bishops. And these bishops then became spiritual fathers for others. And it, it is coming to this time. This is how God wished that. He called. He gave these vocational apostles. They called others and others and others. And church was spreading. And this is, in this we can see God's will. Actually, we can see something from the beginning. You know, we can see that Moses, Abraham was called to go to far country. He, he even he didn't know where to go. And he took a stick. And he started to walk in front of his family and others who followed him to go to unknown territory. Moses was that one who was called to bring freedom to chosen nation. So he walked in front of this nation and he led them from Egypt to promised land. Well, we can make an objection he was not the best leader because it took him 40 years, you know. But, well, there was other reasons. And now, in the church, we see the same. I was touched when uh, Bishop Milan Hautur, Bishop, former Bishop of Kosice, when he was, during his intronization, he made one change which I liked very much. Usually when, we, when Bishop used to come over, so you remember that there was always procession. In the beginning was cross, then altar servers, then priests, from the youngest to the oldest, and then Bishop in the end was coming. And we see all time. But Bishop, but Bishop Milan Hauter, during his ordination, he changed it. There was a cross first, and behind cross, he walked, then priests, then altar servers, and then others. What he, what he, why he changed it? Because he wanted to stress this his role, that he is that one who goes ahead of people God gave him to care. It was so powerful for me and he kept this, this way during all his bishop's ministry. And it was always encouraging somehow to see that and to understand this symbol that he is that one who shows the way. And what we see uh, in this hierarchy, we can see even in the life of saints. If we read the life of saints, we see those monks who reached huge, like this holiness, and we see that they were those who were in the front. They led, even they didn't want that, but they naturally became these leaders who were followed by their disciples, men and women, who were attracted by his life or her life and tried to imitate the way how this saint lived. But they were ahead. So let's, but let's go to down from this wide look at church. Let's go to that little church. 
which is family. The same principle applies there. The same principle applies there. Father is that one who is called to lead the family. Who is called to give live this intensive inner life with God that he is open to inspiration from above and and to go with courage and with some kind of boldness to the unknown territories where God's will leads him. He is that one who is responsible for all members of his house, for the salvation. He is responsible to, and he and this responsibility calls him to show correct way, to lead, to provide, to sanctify. So his leader, his prison family, is that one who shows correct way. And we know that this is difficult role. This is something what is not easy. We know that it requires like a lot of strength because we cannot give what we don't have. If fathers don't have virtues, if fathers don't have spiritual life, if fathers don't have intensive life, inner life with God, his children usually don't have this. For sure, mothers are doing wonderful, tremendous job in this, but in the end, you know, it many times goes to this disappears because this role and example of father is really important. There is a famous actor and songwriter in Slovakia, and he has a very funny song. He's singing about, the song is about little boys. And he's singing that well, that moms, they do whatever they can to turn these boys according to their wish. And he said, but in the end, they always turn and follow father. It's difficult to translate, but there is something there. And something what is not undermining like role of mother, but something what is, I would say, in our spiritual genes. How it was arranged by God. And we can see this principle there. And now we can see that we hear this news. We are talking about a lot of bad things. Of what is happening, crime and bad behavior and oh, many other things. And many times we can hear, this is why, because father is missing families. And, well, it is generation, but it is, it is not apply to all cases, but there is a piece of truth there, big piece of truth. And this is why we see so many crises, because this role of leader, priest, and that one who shows the correct way, is, was abandoned somehow in this, <coughs> in this world. And there are many difficulties because of that. I heard, or actually read, that Vatican is going to publish or some kind of this dicasterion, dicasterion of our congregation all time. It's going to publish some kind of new instruction which will demand a longer preparation for marriage because they say, well, young people are entering to marriage not correctly prepared or well prepared. 
I was reading that, I was thinking that, well, this is good, it's not bad. But start this formation even one year before marriage is too, too, too late. You are not going to change these young people who are only 20 or between 20 and 30 to change their way of mind, to form them, to... It's important to start after birth. St. Telfan de Reclus says, Christian raising of children starts at the moment of their birth. And he adds, and there's more, but he adds one thing that the love parent is the lawful child. Because through this parent prepares the child to obedient to God. And through this children are formed well. And we have to take it seriously. There is one story which was said <coughs> by Saint Gregory the Great Pope many centuries ago. He was, and usually he wrote a lot of stories uh, from his time, or other people he knew, or people who lived in his in his time, and one of the stories is quite horrible. There was a father who had a son. A father loved the son very much. It was, the son was everything for him. He loved him so much that he never tried to correct him. So that happened that when son started to to talk, to speak, he acquired nasty habit. He was swearing and blaspheming God, but ne father never corrected him. So, boy was growing in, in this way, with our correction, when, when he reached six years, a plague touch this area where they lived. The boy got sick and he was dying. Father was holding hands and he was seeing how life is going out from body of his son. Son was crying and swearing and blaspheming God. And this swearing he breathed out last time, and he died. And St. Gregory explains that while well, this happened, God allowed that. To give last warning to this father, because this father was heading to Gehenna, to hell. Not as a, some kind of simple sinner, but like horrible sinner because he neglected good raising of his son. It was tough to read. It was very tough to read, but because I thought, but how many, how many children go this way? How many parents go this way to, to hell if they don't take care of this life given by God to their hands. When they allow them in this foolish love, which allows to do to, to enter all passions to the souls of children. But on this story is one interesting thing. Mother is not mentioned. It was not said if she died or she lives, nothing. And it was puzzling me a little bit. And when I had discussion about this story, and I said, well, this is, this role mother is missing there, why mother didn't try? And the, the answer I got was, it is simple. Mother is not mentioned because Gregory the Great 
wanted to stress this, this huge responsibility, huge responsibility which lies on fathers. This, this story tells only about father because it was his responsibility to show the way, to raise them. I am saying this story which doesn't fit to this celebration atmosphere, but we have to realize that. Your fathers, God gave you his children, and he demands from you to bring his children to heaven. And if you start to think about that, you have to tremble inside. You have to tremble. It's horrible responsibility. But with God's grace, everything is done well. And it is not easy, because I know Fathers, you love your children with whole heart. You are willing to give life for them. You are able to do whatever for your children. But well, sometimes we need to do even things which cause that our heart is bleeding. And, but it is correct. To love, it doesn't mean to please child in everything. To love, it means to teach and to form a child, to become holy, ready to accept eternal life. And sometimes we have to really let our heart to bleed as human in order to form our children correctly. Remember the Mother's Day? I was talking about cross. That cross which mothers have raising and pain they have. The same thing is in this case. This cross is when I want my child to be totally happy, enjoying everything. The cross is when at the moment I correct the child and the child doesn't want to accept this and I have to force him or her to start good formation. At the moment, your heart will be bleeding because it will be more difficult for you than for the child. I remember once uh, my way of punishment of Miran was that, well, if he did something in a certain age, I told him, no bike for a week. And, well, because he allowed to go to his friends. And once something happened, I said, ah, I have to tell him this to punish him. No bike for a week. And then I realized, well, his friends that are going there and there are doing vacations, and he will be not able to go there because of that. Maybe I should change it to do something or to forgive. Really, I, I was fighting in my heart for a long time and it was painful for me to make decision. But in the end, I made the decision. I said, well, you did that. Look, there were rules. No bike for a week. And he was said, okay, no problem. I said, well, I am suffering for like hours preparing to tell you, to punish you, and you accept this with this easiness. 
Sometimes it is this way. Don't think that God's grace don't work in the hearts of your children. And if you are a little bit tougher, don't think that they will be just protesting. Many times they will understand correctly what you mean, what you want from them. But still it is difficult. But I want to give you one perspective. When you get old and you look back to your life, I will tell you the biggest joy you will have will be fruit of this cross, of this pain information. When you will see your children, grandchildren, probably even other generation, and you will see that they became good, holy people. So then you will see the fruit of that bleeding of your heart when you were trying to form your children. And you will tell yourself, this was the best thing I have done in my life. So I wish you to see this fruit of your effort. Don't be afraid. God calls you today like he called apostles. He called them and they left everything. They left comfortable way of living. And they followed him. Today he calls you all fathers to follow your vocation as fathers. It means to go out from some kind of comfortable sphere, space, when we just want to please children. To go to not comfortable space when we need to form them, what is sometimes difficult and of course their hearts are bleeding because we love our children. But don't be afraid to be that leader who sometimes needs to lead own family even through rough path to come to the goal to come to eternal life so I wish you courage boldness I wish you this fear of God from which everything good is born I wish you this desire to grow in own relationships with God. May you are able to give your children, your family, the best direction, the best guidance. Amen. Let us all say with our soul, with our mind, let us say... <coughs> Mighty God of our fathers, we pray you here and have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy. We pray you here and have mercy. Again, we pray for Holy Father Francis Poporum and for Most Reverend Metropolitan William, for God loving Bishop Milan, and for those who serve and serve this Holy Church, for our spiritual fathers and for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Again, we pray for our government and for all in the service of our country. Lord, 
How can we pray for the people who are present who have your great abundant mercy for those who show us mercy and follow Christians of the true faith? For you are merciful, loving God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. May the Lord God remember his kingdom, our Holy Father, Francis Poporom, our most reverend Metropolitan William, our God-loving Bishop Milan, the Priest Diakomoasic Order, our government and all in the service of our country, and the ever memorable founders and benefactors of this Holy Church. May the Lord God remember all your Christians of the true faith, always, now and ever, and forever. For the precious gifts placed before us, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Grant His through mercy, only begotten Son, which we are blessed together with your all holy good and life creating spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Peace be to all.
people that love one another, that with one mind we may profess. The doors, the doors in wisdom, let us be attentive. Let us stand right, last and all, let us be attentive to all for the Holy Land, for I am peace. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and love God and Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with all of you. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is proper and just to sing to you, pleasure to praise you, to thank you, to worship and every place your dominion. For you are God, ineffable, inconceivable, invisible, incomprehensible, ever existing, ever the same, you and your only begotten Son, your Holy Spirit. You brought us out of non existence into being again, raised us up when we had fallen, left nothing undone, until you brought us to heaven and gave us your kingdom to come. For all this we thank you, only begotten Son, and Holy Spirit, for all that we know and that we do not know. For all the manifest and benefits bestowed on us, we also thank you for this liturgy, 
Would you all please to accept from our hands? Even though the same before you, thousands of archangels, tens of thousands of angels, cherubim and seraphim, six wings, many eyes, soaring out on their wings, singing, shouting, crying aloud, and saying the triumphal hymn. We also cry out with these blessed powers, loving kindness, and say, Holy are you, and all holy you, and only begotten Son, your Holy Spirit. Holy are you, and all holy magnificent is your glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him should not perish, but have life everlasting. He came and fulfilled the whole divine plan in our behalf. On the night he was betrayed, or rather when he surrendered himself for the life of the world, he took bread into his holy and all pure immaculate hands, give thanks and blessed, sanctified, broke, and gave it to his holy disciples, apostles, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. Amen. Likewise, he took the chills after supper, saying, Drink of this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Amen. Remember, therefore, this same command and was come to pass here on behalf of the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, and the third day, the ascension into heaven, the sitting at the right hand at the second coming glory. Offering you your own from your own, always and everywhere. Moreover, we offer to you this spiritual and unbody sacrifice. We implore, pray, and treat you. Send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts lying before us, and make this bread the precious body of your Christ, and that which is in this shell is the precious blood of your Christ, changing them by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, those who partake of them, they bring about the spirit of vigilance, the remission of sins, the communion of the Holy Spirit, the fullness of the heavenly kingdom, and confidence in you, not the judgment err and condemnation or condemnation. Moreover, we offer the spiritual sacrifice for those departing faith. The forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and for each spirit brought to perfection in faith. Especially for our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious lady, Date Otokos and ever Virgin Mary.
Among the first, O Lord, remember Holy Father Francis Popo, our most reverend Metropolitan William. Our God, loving Bishop Milan, preserve them for the Holy Church is in peace, safety, honor, health for many years as they faithfully impart the word of truth. And grant that with one voice, one heart, we may glorify and praise, most honor the magnificent name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and forever. Amen. May the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. Now that we have commemorated all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the precious gifts of our consecrated God, who loves us all, may receive this holy heavenly mystical, there is Roma, spiritual fragrance, and send down upon us in return His divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Asking for unity in the faith and communion of the Holy Spirit, let us come to ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. And make us worthy, O Master, that we may be confidence and without condemnation. There I call you Father, God of heaven and Son. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Peace be to all. Bow your heads to the Lord. Grace, the mercy, loving kindness, only begotten Son, with me, I bless together with your all holy, good, and life creating spirit, now and ever and forever. Let us be attentive, holy gifts to holy people.
O Lord, I believe. Approach with fear of God and with faith. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord is God and has revealed himself to us.
Save your people, God, and bless your inheritance. Bless is our God, always, now and ever, and forever. Now that we have received the divine, holy, most pure, immortal, heavenly life, criminal, some mysteries of Christ, let us worthily thank the Lord. For you are our sanctification, we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Let us go forth in peace. Oh, let us pray to the Lord. O oh, Lord, blessing those who bless you and sanctify those who trust in you. Say your people and bless your in bless your inheritance. The fullness of your church, sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them, return by your divine power, and do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your church, to your priest, to our government, and to all your people. For all generous, given ever perfect gift is from above. Come be done from the Father of light. Give glory, thanks, and worship to you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Now and ever and forever. The blessing of the Lord be upon you through His grace, loving kindness, always, now and ever, and forever. Amen. Glory to you, Christ God, our hope. Glory to you.
may Christ our true God, risen from the dead, mercy on us and save us, we praise of his most pure mother. O the holy and glorious illustrious apostles, the holy father, John Christ, much bishop Constantinople. O the holy father, Nicholas, the patron of his church, and we praise all the saints, for Christ is good and loves us all.